This is episode 64 of Michael Jackson's Dreamless On, an academic conversation. And today we have an exciting episode because Liz was in the studio with MJ. And Thriller had 40 years. So Liz was in the studio and we all want to experience through her how that was. Right? I think that must have been so exciting. Yeah, really exciting. It was so good. Good. I'm firing a question on you. Can you tell us how it felt to be at the heart of the creative experience? That sense of learning how Michael Jackson worked? Um, I think that the... Um... I think that the the way the session was set up was really dynamic. Was really, there was a dynamism to to it. There was a sense of um, of energy, of really really positive, really vibrant energy to the way that the whole session was set up. And um, in the studio with MJ's coming to Zurich. In this in December, so Brad has said Brad Sunday, the 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 creator within the studio of MJ, has said um, we should um, help him advertise it because his page has been taken down. Um, why is that? Why is he that? doesn't know? He doesn't know. Oh, he doesn't know. That's why. Fa on Facebook, is that? That's on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know this is an issue. And many have it, just in general, because I heard it from a friend who's a social media manager. Facebook is messing around with a lot of things, changing a lot of things. People lose their pages, lose their business, etc. That has nothing to do with what he is posting. Nothing whatsoever. Just so that everyone knows. Yeah. And how was that? How, how did that feel to really capture that sense of, wow, this is how our hero worked. This is how we created that beautiful music that we still enjoy to this day. It was kind of like a surreal experience. It was a sense of this is something really special that I've never, like, I've never experienced before. With Michael mm -hmm. Jackson, mm -hmm. and I felt closer to him than I have before, but I also felt like the absence of him a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, would have been nice if he could do that himself, right? I don't think Michael would have done that. I just feel like he always wanted to maintain the mystery. I think so too, and I also think that he. If we look at how he is, he was teaching by example on many levels. Yes. Yeah, Humanitarian, definitely. artistry, kindness, love. He was a teacher by example. I don't think he is a classroom teacher in that sense or lecturing. But he could have at one point. Yeah, yeah. he was very good at it. He did this Oxford Union speech that I thought was just a really, really fantastic speech that... Um, was so inspiring for me that I based my entire book, Dangerous Philosophy, on it. Mm. And um, how did the behind the scenes stories uh, completely completed your knowledge about Michael Jackson and his art? How did that complete your, because you have done so much study into his art on different levels. I mean, the result is your, uh, book the dangerous philosophy still one of its kind so how did this these behind the scenes stories you heard complete that that vision that you had and that what you found in your research well um there were some new things that i didn't know from before there was some sense of um there was a sense of novelty definitely because but i think that there's there's ample room for, for people who haven't gone to in the studio of MJ to find out what it was like in the recording studio from 
um, Man in the Music, the creative life and work of Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like it was an extension of that, of the reading I'd done for that. And I just reread Man in the Music last, last month. So it was a, a really lovely extension of that. Um, and it kind of brought that to life. Yeah. Because you saw there's a lot of really lovely um, clips and things that you can see in the session, which bring the stories that Brad was telling to life. Yeah, does it give you that sense of, because I know Men in the Music, it has, um, uh, it places everything in a culture, uh, culture historical perspective. So when you were born now and you start to become a fan and you want to know more, you can go to that book and you can read how that time was. Did you get that sense? Did it, because you're from uh, 87, did that complete anything for you? Did you get more... Inside. Brad did a really amazing job of contextualizing each of the albums he was talking about mm -hmm. and the times he was talking about. He contextualized those things in terms of his life and in terms of Michael's and then also in terms of the popular music culture at the time and the political state at the time. Yeah, brilliant. So a yeah, lot really to gain good. from. Yeah, it was right. really, really good. Yeah, it yeah. was great. And, and so I can imagine this specifically interesting for recording artists, very technical. Um, very have technical. you found aspects we as academics could learn and maybe even use in our essays or something um, you can use? Not so much. I felt like I would have liked all of this stuff that Brad was saying to be in a book and uh -huh. I could reference it, mm -hmm. but I made a lot of notes. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of technical aspects of recording and the recording process and watching Michael record his albums that I um, made notes on and that will definitely feature in like the second edition of Dangerous Philosophies. Yeah, I can imagine that because I know from experience that people love to see the process. They learn so much when they, when you put texts like real written text or they see or write they love that because they 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 get part of 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 you as an artist and of the process the same with me with painting when they see my painting me painting and even if it's a time lapse that is really highly respected and people love that so i can imagine that that completes and gives extra when you when you write about it and i can imagine that he doesn't write a book about it because then he wouldn't have to lecture MJ in the studio anymore. You don't, you don't have to have this experience. Although I think he could do both. I think way. going into a studio, because it was at Terminal Studios in um, London, and I feel like going into a studio, a recording studio, and doing that work together with the group of people that are there and with Brad was really magical. Mm -hmm. Because someone like me doesn't have like the, the many opportunities to go into studios no. and doesn't really understand the technical aspects of recording music. But I love music. But, you know, you just hear you hear artists say, oh, I went into the studio and then I was recording and mm -hmm. and we and, and it's a really technical thing. It's a really technical process. And um, I loved being in the studio itself. That was that was really magical. Mm -hmm. Great, fantastic. Um, is this more something for musicologists or also for academics like us who are from humanities? Do you think? I think a wide range of people from a lot of disciplines will were there and will enjoy it and learn from it. But I think that most of all, it's about audio production, you know, and so those mm -hmm. are the people that will benefit the most from it. But I think it's it's really good for everybody from different walks of life and general fans who just want to be feel a bit closer to Michael. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah, you said that already. I felt closer than before. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, how did Michael Jackson's vision for his music and sound in particular, and viewed that 
deep sense of his great artistry in you, even more than you already have from listening and reading and studying and researching? Um, I was deeply inspired. Um, I think what what made the time there was the people that I spent the time with. There was um, there's an amazing fan called Emma and another one called Angie and Angie's daughter was there, and there were just and there was Gillian and um, loads of people. I'm sorry if I forgot your names. Um, Helen was there, and I think the community. And the and the and the embracing of Michael together, and the and the fact that we were all there for the same purpose, and we were all like we all loved his work, and we were all there to learn about Michael's work. Um, and then there were about fifty of us on the first day, and there were about maybe thirty of us on the second day. Um, I particularly loved the work we did with going into Neverland because I've had two experiences of going into Neverland this year. One was Kingvention, the other one was in the studio of MJ, and it was just so magical, it was so, so enlivening and so heartwarming to be able to see the world Michael created for himself and for children. Um, and that aspect was really, really powerful. Yeah. And so that is something that um, not only community-wise, fan-base-wise, but that whole that whole feeling that Michael Jackson always brought out anyway comes back there in the studio, even if he isn't there. Um, so you could, could research him on musicology, his way of recording, and we come to that later also. You can do art history with him, um, because of his aesthetic view on things, you can do sociology like humanism, etc., and how he so all walks of life, and that is, I think, how he was. But they come together in the studio, that's what you say, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and coming to the last question, let us continue with the latest celebration of Michael Jackson, his album Thriller. Uh, I can only talk from my listening experience via Apple Music. Um, so can you tell me what your first initial thoughts were when you started listening to the, to the album? Um, Thriller 40 kind of caught me off guard uh, this year. Um, I, I, I'm usually one of those people who is like waiting with bated breath for the release of the album and things. And um, I was following the, you know, the releasing of the different titles of the songs that were gonna be on the album, the extra material, the unreleased tracks, that second disc. Um, I followed that and I followed the, you know, estates um, ideas about what they were gonna bring out with the album. I'm going to the Thriller 40 uh, documentary in London tomorrow. It was on the 30th. We're recording this on the 29th. And um, my first ex first impression of the album was not good. It wasn't good. Like, I love Thriller. So I listened to Thriller first. And then I started listening to the extra material. And, you know, I noticed that Andy Healy did a lovely review of um, Thriller 40 for Albumism. And he gave it, he gave the bonus material four stars. I think I would probably give it three. Yeah. What was your first impressions? Well, uh, my first impression being on Apple Music and being a musician, I never loved MP3 because they squeeze everything and 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 michael was about sounds michael was about the depth of sound and um when i listened i literally my move my ears moved like like a cat can move its ears or a dog i had like what's happening here especially they made it spatial and i could hear all the sounds so i listened to the original album and i thought yeah this is so good. This is so good as it is. 
then I listened to the the to the extra and I had like no don't need it I'm sorry I won't even give it two th a three star for me it's a two star the only thing I loved in it is the demo versions of um of how what the thriller had was meant to be first and starlight it's starlight and I liked some other demos I didn't like the mixes of thriller 25 and I have like less is more you don't put that in it's not necessary and um yeah to me it raised the question how do you celebrate an album the biggest album in history of popular culture how do you celebrate its 40th jubilee how do you do that and i think for me personally um if I think about the whole aesthetic thing, what was there 40 years ago was so incredibly good, also sound-wise, and that's why I related to um, the vision Michael had about sound. He was so meticulous with sound. And I heard someone say, who worked with him, even, I think maybe it was even Quincy Jones, even when we didn't hear it anymore, he heard it anyway, and he wanted he wanted that little tweak and so overall the whole thing because they made it spatial they brought sound back that's for me is is a four star the additional is no no i like the demos i don't like the the mixes and you don't have to give me um of the thriller itself three different versions and a total mix of the whole album i'm not waiting for that no to be honest yeah um i agree with you i just felt that i thought i think i think it's me you know like i feel like i'm just being a bit of a downer and i think i'm a bit of a downer with thriller and i'm a bit of an upper with bad so there were some tracks leaked from the bad album sessions Mm -hmm. um famously leaked and they were just stunningly good um and i just feel like you know bad i believe personally is a superior album to thriller mm -hmm. and i feel like bad should have sold more copies than thriller personally if it was like all all things considered but that's just really personal opinion I, I tell, yeah I but totally, i think yeah i think uh, I, all music is personal opinion anyway so you will I have was, people who love it and not love it and love it a bit love it a lot etc so yeah i also feel like i have to let it grow on me so i've been listening to it a lot i've been listening to thriller 40 a lot and i've been listening to it the whole way through the first disc and the second disc and I feel like it has to grow on me. I have to I have to let it grow on me. But I do think that I thought that Escape was a better album for this for the second disc than the second mm -hmm. disc. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a really unfair comparison, you know, because because Escape was was demos from all over the shop, from all over the, yeah. the career. Yeah. Yeah. And this is just demos from the thriller sessions. Yeah. Yeah. So I did think that the the demos the demos disc on Escape twenty fourteen was better than the second disc of the Thriller forty. I agree with you. I agree with you because on th Thriller twenty five there were also uh, short uh, snippets of uh, interviews. Uh, it was like Quincy Jones, Quincy and... Jones, and people talking. And I loved that. I like demos. I like the process of what Michael does. Probably something that you have experienced in MJ in the studio on a deeper level, even. But I thought this choice wasn't well. It, it, let me say it wasn't my choice. At all. Thriller 25, I feel like Thriller 25 was better than Thriller 40. Yeah. And I feel like the, that Thriller Special Edition, uh, was it 2001 that came out? The one with the, the, one with the interviews was the best of yeah. all. Yeah. And I but feel that's like, something well, that why Michael... wouldn't you put the interviews back in? 
yeah. when you took you know Fergie and like yeah. Kanye West and people why wouldn't you put the interviews in I feel yeah. like the interviews needed to be there they were yeah. really good I love those interviews well interchange the, the 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 interviews with those mixes that don't do anything they don't add anything but that's my personal opinion um, you can't please everybody and, no, and you I, can't. I don't ex no. I don't expect the estate to please me you know to say like oh let's make an album that Liz likes so <laughs> <laughs> would be nice yeah, yeah no. <laughs> no but I don't expect know, it, that I don't I kind of really want to know what the MJ cast thought of it I really wish they would do like a hopefully they're listening to this um Hopefully they'll do like a round table on it because I, I really want to get more opinions on, on Driller 40 and more honest opinions. I know um the M Big MJ debates with Pez Jax, they did an episode on Driller 40 and there were people on there that were just like not loving some songs, like not loving Carousel. And I was just thinking to myself that, yeah, like, I wouldn't say there's a Michael Jackson song that I don't like, but... I, there's some songs I wouldn't choose to listen to mm. if if there were other songs available. Yeah, but there there is this thing that he made his choices what came on the original record and what not. So now you get a gamut of what he didn't put on it also. And I think that is um, that opens debate even more. But I think also that he made deliberate choices and um to me when i listened to that and i listened uh, several times to the to the, the, the not the demos the first part the original album i i just like that original album i i see because he he did this based on what tchaikovsky's nutcracker did yeah with and and so you see this is not just you put a, a bunch of songs and you get uh, like eight, nine songs and that's the album. No, 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 no. He thought about this and they really thought about this. And this is a composition in itself. It was and a that sense makes it... of like every song needed to be a hit. How Something can we make like every that. song is, a yeah. hit? Yeah. Rather than just, a, just a, like a single and then like an album of like B tracks. Yeah. The no. let's make every song on this album, you know, a a lead single song. Yeah. And I think because the quality of Thriller is so high, the quality of the second disc of material pales in comparison. Yeah. Because yeah. you kind of go from the high of listening to Thriller, which is so good. Like, if I'm biased towards bad and dangerous, but... Thriller is so good. It is really, really fantastic. And then you've got these demos and these like unreleased tracks mm. that are some material that was left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, and for a reason. Yeah, you can you can definitely say that. Oh, okay, they made the right choices here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I totally agree with you. I had exactly the same feeling. You take words right out of my mouth. So then we go to the movie because they they changed the um they changed I wanted to the, talk the... a little bit about um before we get into the film about my chapter on thriller that okay. I did in Dangerous yeah. Philosophies. Okay. It was chapter 14 from Crown to Cross, the poison chalice of thriller's success. Yeah. And I said um I described Thriller is like a poison chalice, something that seems advantageous at first, mm -hmm. but but is later to found to be, you know, a negative. And I feel like the success of Thriller um, was very, very difficult because... Can you quote something? Can you read a part? Yeah, I'll, I'll give a few quotes. Um, the poison chalice, uh, the, this quote, uh, this even-handed justice commands the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips, William Shakespeare. This quote appears just before a Scottish nobleman commits regicide on the early modern stage. Shakespeare's 400-year-old play challenges ambition and self-seeking behaviour. 
The poison chalice, also featured in Matthew 20:20 20, 20 and 26:39, is the cup that one must drink, a poisoned cup referred to as the bitter cup. The OED, Oxford English Dictionary, defines it as a chalice containing wine laced with poison and an award which appears advantageous but proves to be detrimental. It is this second definition that this chapter is most concerned with, but the metaphoric substance of the first definition is particularly useful for, for the understanding of the concept too. There are opinions about the album as a work of manifest genius or as one of accidental timeliness, but Jackson was also coping with a period of intense depression. By age 24, Jackson had been subsumed into the consciousness of America as a child, and for many, as the little boy, he would remain. The commodification of Jackson's physical image was the selling of a soul that transpired first through records and short films, then compact discs and MP3s, and no doubt through via future technologies. Jackson became a king. He also became a sufferer of the concept of the body politic where the body of the king becomes the preserve and representative of the healthiness of the state. Similarly, as Jackson's body seemed to change, so too did the world around him, digitizing and modernizing itself. To the average casual viewer, it may well have seemed that Jackson also went from child star to adult star, mortal to eternal and physical to digital. Yeah. I have a few more quotes, but let's, Let's let's take that stuff from there. I love that whole concept of he went from the child star to the adult star, yeah. from the mortal to the eternal, from the physical to the digital. Yeah, yeah. And you say something really important there, the physical to the digital. We are there now. And I know that in your interview you had Saturday uh, talked about um, uh, new materialism and... Um, text as artifact but also the disc itself as artifact and the booklet with uh images yeah, digitalization has taken away that and if you understand michael jackson and his vision and what he did and where it comes from you you um kind of uh, cut off a lot of important information that people need to get into his music and to understand what he's doing on a deeper yeah. level He's yeah. just, he's not just the average pop musician. He's not, he's stepping into all genres. And um, yeah, I love what you write here. Absolutely, absolutely. And and in, in that sense, the, the sound that he created there, and we know this from um, uh, Sonic Fantasies, the brilliant documentary about, oh, wow, yeah. about making thriller the bruce swedian and michael jackson and they were um, and i think bruce swedian has been there with michael for all his albums those two were gold because michael and his ears and his vision bruce swedian with his ears and his synergy and the sound was so important so important and that's how they created thriller as it was and so the digital the digitalization of music and mp3 has flattened that apart from that it has also the the pitch of the tones have gone up which gives a very uneasy feeling and when you listen back to thriller as it was and i come from the age of uh, vinyl or vinyl with the two boxes and the specific uh, chords that go wire that goes to from your from your um, pickup to your to the boxes the speakers <laughs> the speakers, speakers sit on a different level on a specific distance from them to really get emerged in that music <laughs> you can't yeah. do that with digital it's not possible but it's anyway possible. it is really it's it's right what you write it is um yeah, from physical to digital. I love that analogy. And um, also the composition of the 
of the album, as you say, you feel this is oh, this is done. This is as it should be, and everything else was yeah left on the cutting table on the on the floor. No, not this. And um, I spoke, I, I wrote about this a bit, my thoughts about it, because I know that the golden ratio, which is a specific sequence of numbers and decides a composition. For artists, it's a composition based on the spiral. You find this everywhere in nature. It's so natural that um, when you see that, you feel like, oh, when you hear it, it is also in music it comes. It's composed as well. People base that on the specific um, num number numbers of the spiral. It's a sp specific sequence of numbers. But also, in that's what I think, it can be in how they composed the whole album. The, the, it's so well laid out, the numbers, the songs, that it is complete. That gives it that... You start to breathe and that gives it that feeling and from that we can go into the 4k short films um, yeah i just wanted to um just give a few more quotes because the out the chapter then goes into like how thriller became the poison chalice okay i say the jackson's misrepresentation his worldwide success and deeply personal misery began with thriller in 1980, Jackson was the biggest selling black artist in history, but the snub at the Grammy Awards turned him all about and made him obsessed by many accounts with proving that a black man descended from slaves in a country mired in African blood could be the most successful recording artist in the world. The power Jackson gained from Thriller's success meant he was soon perceived as a cultural threat. Alongside Jackson's fissuring outlook on the world, a world where he would never feel safe again, there was the world's increasingly negative perception of him. All of Jackson's subsequent releases would be dwarfed by Thriller, by the spectre, the memory, and even the idea of Thriller. It was a poison chalice. The album's success disguised the bitter poison that made Jackson concern himself with unachievable dreams. Yeah. Do you think that at that point he kind of railroaded also his own um, his own success in the future? Um, I think that Thriller was just so big, you know, that nothing could come near, come near it. Nothing could mm -hmm. go near it. And Michael wanted to to do better each time. And that was an impossibility because Thriller did so well. Mm -hmm. Do you think he did better? Yes. So do I. I think even if it wasn't the biggest selling, I believe that he evolved so much as a as an artist. He surpassed himself. He uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I also have that feeling. Yeah. He was uh, he was limitless in his um creation. Yeah, he surpassed himself. Like, um, I am one of those people who, you know, I think Thriller, um, not Thriller, Invincible is a really good album. Like, yeah, I, really I like love Invincible. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I think yeah. it's a really good album and um, I like it the way it is. I don't want it to be like changed or altered or improved upon. No. I love, I really love Invincible. So yeah. I feel like Michael did better every time. Like there was a little bit of Threatened on Michael Jackson's This Is It. Mm. And it was so beautiful. Like, I remember listening to it in the cinema and just being like, is that threatened from Invincible? And it was, and I was like, this is so good. Invincible is so good. It's just, I feel like it's just not an album that's really designed to be listened to in a digital way. It's supposed to be listened to in like an analog way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like that is it's mm -hmm. almost it's more of an analog album. I think I think to be honest, for all his albums, that's the best. Because the digital doesn't doesn't make it better. It's easier to distribute. And for me, there it ends. There it ends. 
Um, and I know a lot of people will say, oh, no, that's not true. And when we have our sound system and the Apple music and you hear it, yeah, but there's nothing. And I know from experience that a lot of people go back to the turning table and the vinyl. And yeah, vinyl, set is, of good... vinyl is making and... a big comeback. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I understand why. I really understand why. So, yeah. Yeah. You have more quotes? No, that was it. I think that is a good quote to end on. That that thriller was this point. Was, I see yeah. personally, I see thriller as like this poison chalice because it was just so successful, and it just, yeah. it was just everything from that point onwards had to be a down yeah. trajectory, mm. a downward trajectory. Even though Michael was trying to go higher, yeah. I don't think he tried to go high. He 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 went higher, but maybe not in sales. But I don't think that was even important to him. Maybe he was focused on that, but yeah. But then we can say that you can never celebrate an album like that in the way they did now, right? Yeah, like so we that's, diff we that's difficult. Mentioned you can't, the yeah. AMAs, like the whole big thing about the AMAs, like. And this award show where Michael Jackson was supposed to be really celebrated mm. at the American Music Awards, and he wasn't. They just had, like, We Are the World at the end sort of and thing. And he wasn't even mentioned. Not once. No. no. Which I think was really just poor. I yeah, but that, like, that's, I'm, I'm that's very poor. AMAs. Yeah, that's very poor. I'm not but, Appar apparently there were hardly people watching anyway so you know um he wasn't there and tributes weren't there but tributes were all over the world in another way and i think that's way more important it's way more important to have globally um a thriller was on a buzz like crazy i mean a lot of people celebrated it anyway and, and that's the most important thing if you celebrate it for yourself um if you celebrate it with fans if you've celebrated in a community who needs an award um show if hardly anyone watches anyway because they cancelled michael jackson tribute <laughs> so yeah. yeah, and I watched the tributes. If you if you haven't seen them, the Chris Brown one and the Sierra one was so good. I thought Sierra was just stunningly good. She was mm -hmm. so good. And I think that she would have been a fantastic performance. And um I was disappointed. I was disappointed. So so were many, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think that's, I think that's still a backlash from, from everything that happened uh, three years ago. And um, But that will will be subsided, I know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because Thriller deserves better. It would, it I think Michael Jackson in general time. deserves better. Way better. Way better. And Did when... you get that magazine that they made in America on Thriller? No, no. I really no. want a copy of that. No. It looks really nice. But they do mention the allegations, which I didn't really want. Oh, God, to... they can never stop about that. Yeah. I think it's just one of those things that negativity, people gravitate towards negativity. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's it's the... Um, our brain is wired like that. Yeah. It's, from, it's, it's the reptile brain that is always looking out for that lion that attacks you. Um, and media uses its psychology. So yeah, that's that's it that's does. what it is. And yeah, you can't you can resist it, but um, the more you are against it, the more you get from it. So I step out of resistance there. I just go with the positive. Just share like, oh, how amazing he was. Oh, this is a fantastic book. You need to read this book. You know, a different approach. Because when you start fighting it, something, you get it even more. I always say the universe doesn't know the difference between yes and no. It will give you whatever you ask. So, yeah. But then we come to the 4K 
<laughs> the, the short films. I mean, the short films. And um, what was your... Have you seen them in, in, in that 4K format? No. I'm not a purist. Um, I saw the screenings of the short films at convention. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Um, that was lovely to see them on the big screen. Um, I saw a lot of images of people showing the 4K quality. Um, and I think it's really nice that the, that the the short films have come out in 4K. I think it's really good. It's like a positive move because people are listening to watching short films on on the bigger screens. Mm -hmm. So they don't want something that's like pixelated. They want something that's sharp. Yeah. So yeah. I think that that's really important. Um, yeah, I think it was just it was just a nice move. I think that that was the estate listening to the fans and asking listening to what the fans want yeah i also think by the way that we, we we point to the estate but sony is a big part in this too and um so the, if if we think the estate wants something i think sony also wants something and um so there is always a middle but yeah i've watched it on my laptop and yeah, it's pick it is sharper in pixel, but I'm like you, I'm not that purist. For me, it was very important that I kept the ratio as it is, because that's again, I come to the golden ratio. You have this in in the in the um in the ratio of the films too, um, which makes it so pleasurable to watch and to see. Um, so cinematic. Yeah. Yeah, very cinematic um and that's that's what i love about it but i watch it now and then every way um so yeah yeah me personally 4k 5k 6k 7k 8k how far can we go i mean <laughs> i don't know but um i just love 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 the film I just love his short films. I love the idea behind it. I love how he had this vision, how his versatility, and that's what I love about it. And yeah, but I can imagine when you have a large screen. I don't. I do not have a large screen, so I don't watch TV. But um, I can imagine that that is uh, amazing to see. Who knows? Next time you are, is it? It is in three D, and you are in holistically in it. Yeah. You're in, the, you're in the short film. You have like, so, oh shit. <laughs> speaking of being in the film, they had these immersive experiences. They had one in Dusseldorf and they had one in New York City. They had these thriller and pop up sort of immersive experiences that people oh, went on. Okay. And I read um, Pez Jax's uh, review of the one he went to. And someone else went to the New York one and I read their review. And I thought that they looked really cool. I think that those mm -hmm. things were and how, really how good. And how does that look? Because I know you have an emerge, uh, immersive experience with the, the art of Van Gogh, the Dutch painter. And that um, so is that, that that you are in a room and everything is on the walls and you are really into the scenes? Yeah, there's one. there was one place, there was one spot where you could, I think, walk on the steps. Oh. On the, and in Billie Jean. And they yeah. light up. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. To like step yeah. on the steps, like Michael step stepped, on, walk yeah. in his footsteps, and then have the, the floor panels light up. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. That is. But that is a form of entertainment that we will get more and more. And um, that is, uh, uh, I think it's good for for fans and for people who don't know him to go into that experience and feel what it was and feel what it is it is another way of behind the scenes isn't it it's being in yeah, the scenes another, <laughs> another way of being in the scene mm. kind of to immerse yourself in that world i yeah. think the thriller is a really rich vibrant world mm -hmm. um i would prefer to be immersed in bad personally but yeah. I think thriller has its merits and definitely 
um, deserves the attention it's been given. Yeah. I'm very excited about the documentary tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I do not have a ticket for that, but um, yeah. Let me know how it was. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's coming out in January, I think, everywhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I, I've seen Sonic Fantasies, and we were allowed to see it a few times, and I was so, so... I really... I, I, I couldn't stop watching um, the whole way it is filmed, the whole the questions, the emotion, the love that comes from it it was so that was, was how for me that is for me love. that that is the that is the thriller documentary for thriller 40. Yeah. That is, yeah i i i totally agree with you that that is just the ultimate sonic fantasy yeah. was the ultimate yeah yeah um i'm interested to see what they do and mm -hmm. what they come up with and the ideas behind it mm -hmm. um I'm interested to see. I've got an open mind. That's good. You also you always should have an open mind when you go to this. Yeah. I noticed on Twitter that Marcos wrote to him and it became apparent that he was the one to make the the Thriller 40 documentary. Oh, no, I have still Yeah, I still have um unused uh, material with uh, from interviews from Bruce Sweden. So I'm Curious if um, he uses that or not. That'll be interesting. I wonder, you know, the perspective Nelson George will take on it. Um, I feel like it's all up in the air. Mm -hmm. If it was a Spike Lee documentary, I would have said that my, I would be optimistic. Yeah. But because it's Nelson George, I'm just a bit like, we'll see. We'll see how yeah. it comes out. Why do you think he was chosen for this? I don't know. I really don't know. I was looking at his uh, Wikipedia and um, I think they want someone who's uh, more critical, maybe, this time. But Spike Lee's on the side of Michael and then maybe they wanted someone that's a little more impartial, a little, little more critical yeah. of Michael. And Marcus maybe. is also on the side of... of but he made a very, um, a very good documentary, absolutely that celebrates the album and with it also Michael Jackson because it shows that everyone was for Michael and loved him to bits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last thoughts. MJ in the studio, you can have your last thoughts about that and together, last thoughts about Thriller 40. Okay, my last thoughts about in the studio with MJ are just magical, really magical really was and then my last thoughts about thriller 40 so it's growing on me mm -hmm. um our motto is it's all for love yeah and i just didn't haven't felt the love in it no. i don't feel like it was made with love john brank has recently brought out his own like youtube uh, instagram page with these videos mm -hmm. he's talking about michael jackson museum oh which, you know yeah he's talking that's about interesting museum. Yeah, he had a lot of things to say on his own in his Instagram. And um, it'll be interesting to see where the estate go from here because there's still Thriller 50 to come in 10 years' time. And 60 and 70 and 400. Yeah. <laughs> what about your last thoughts? My last thoughts, well, MJ in the studio, I don't know, but I would love to go there at one point. Um, I loved you uh, sharing that and um, answering the questions so people can take that and um, maybe go there and write us an essay. Um, I, also, I also have uh, on Thriller 40, yeah, I have the same as you. I've missed the love in it. For me, it's more, it's Thriller 14. We have a buzz. And if we publish it and we do some demos on it, just add some demos on it and do some this. And, oh, okay, just a little bit more. Then we get more. Yeah, it's it's more a money thought than a love thought. And um, um, I think you missed the point. Less is more, always. 
um yeah i look forward to uh to the film what you think about it the documentary how that is celebrated if it is a real celebration or if it is whatever but yeah we shall see we, we shall see yeah but i love just the album as in itself i love to listen to the album itself uh uh, spatial audio i need the sound i need really the sound and all the bits and bobs and all the keep keys and hearts and haws and clear and also in different from different perspectives yeah that is what i love about it the sound is better mp3 is dead i hope it stays dead and um yeah made without love unfortunately but for us it's all about love and so oh, love. thank you all for listening it's all about love and all for love <laughs>